Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about some flesh and blood drama. And as it is very interesting for me to see flesh and blood as a game develop because now I'm older, I understand business more. When Magic the Gathering was developing, I was very young. Um, my first pack was a beta pack, which I still have the majority of that pack. And it's a different time. It was a very different time, not only because I was younger, but also because that was the 19, the late 1980s, 1990s. It was a different period in America than today. So it's interesting to see these games develop. And even though I will never buy Flesh and Blood because of the distribution that Rudy has. Um, so let me explain Flesh and Blood kind of from my perspective. Flesh and Blood has free core uh, people they sell to. Channel Fireball, Star City Games. What these two have in common, I believe Star City Games is the second one, is they actually hold large events for the calling and events uh, kind of like a Magic Grand Prix. So they need product and they cannot get product from a distributor, they need product directly which means they have a special relationship with this James White character of their game, who would be like Richard Garfield for us in Magic the Gathering. Now, the third one seems kind of like an outlier, right? These two are big companies, they are massive, and they run the events, which is sometimes difficult. Again, imagine if they did not have product, how difficult it would be to run a event if their product was not direct and they had the byproduct to run the event, not, not gonna work out, right? That's why they need this hookup. The third person, and it is a person with no employees, would be Rudy Chan. So he is getting product at a very, very discount rate. So early adopters, um, and this is gonna play an important part because this is, in my opinion, from what I've researched and I watched a few videos on this, uh, Fluke and Box, I think is another, he has the opposite opinion. He's very anti uh, this channel. His opinion, and I think mine is as well, is George, the guy who did Flesh and Blood, who had it in his store, who's now banned from Flesh and Blood, uh, and the podcast they do together with Louis, who is the owner of the channel. And Louis recently came out with a video saying, hey, you know what? We have been snacking Magic the Gathering for the last two to three years since Flesh and Blood came out. I sold my Magic the Gathering reserve list cards for Flesh and Blood. I made videos about how Magic sucks for Flesh and Blood because Flesh and Blood is amazing. And now he is you know, he quit Magic to do Flesh and Blood full time, and now he's coming back to Magic. What? So, <laughs> that's the drama. Is, I think, very strangely, this is probably the only Flesh and Blood channel that is naturally a Flesh and Blood channel. Like, Rudy's, his fame, the reason he even had the ability to save Flesh and Blood, the game, and this is why he is the third. Now there's only two of them now because Channel Fireball obviously got acquired by TCG Player. Now does TCG Player have the special relationship now with the uh, James White character? I don't know. But people were very jealous, especially early adopters like this game store, one of the earliest adopters of that they were, did not get a special status. That they still have to have a distributor and so on. They weren't fed directly for pennies. And you know, I, it's always been mentioned to me in the comments, the fans of Alpha Investment, the fan of Flesh and Blood, that Rudy pays for printings of his play mats and his cards and so on. I don't think you understand how influencer marketing works. The influencer rarely pays for the product they're trying to sell, okay? So like in crypto, how many people actually are paying? Or I'll take the most recent, stake.com which is a gambling website. How many of the Aiden Rosses, the Nelk Boys, the Steve will do it? How, do you think they're gambling with their own money? Or do you think they're gambling with stake.com money? They're absolutely gambling with stake.com money. They're making 
so much money from. So when they when you see all these big wins, yeah, it's a life changing win if it was real, if it was you know, hey, my own money. But when you're gambling on with house money, you can't lose, man. You cannot lose. So that's not how influencer marketing does not work where the guy pays a shit ton of money to the company to help them market for free and the relationship established and nothing against rudy i just think this is a very shady kind of relationship um and i wouldn't want to be involved in a game like this and this is what all they wanted this is what the george wanted this is what all the louis wanted this is what every single person in flesh and blood wanted early adopter i think George actually has fleshandblood.com, which is a major gaffe by by the creator, the James White character, the creator of the game, because, I mean, at some point in time, you knew the name of your game and no one else did, so why didn't you buy the domain that was ab absolutely available? So, that special relationship was because Rudy saved the game. Without Rudy, there's no game that there was a very small amount of people interested in the game. He bought the game to the Magic the Gathering audience and some of that audience flipped to the game. You see one of their videos, oh, I saw, sold an Alpha Lotus to buy some flesh and blood. Oh, I sold my Magic And in this case, this Louis individual, he did sell his Magic Reserve List collection to buy flesh and blood cards. This was, where, where did he get this idea from? He got the idea from Alpha Investment sell me your magic collection, I'll sell you some flesh and blood. So uh, the drama really comes down to um, the podcast, Louis and George. George has a store and he's always you know, talking about how big the store is, how competitive his players are, and they got banned. He got banned, let me, let me put it this way. His store got banned from this gem program, which when explained to me, sounds like the WPN, and you can still sell magic without the WPN, right? The WPN is just competitive play. You won't get these planeswalker points, right? Which no one really uses anyway. But you could still sell magic. You could still hold magic tournaments. You know, you could still have, you might not, not be able to do pre-releases because you're not able to get the kits, the pre-release kits, because you're not a WPN. But nonetheless, you could have Friday Night Magic. You could have EDH. You could just have magic more casually than competitively. So the drama is really two-sided. So when somebody turns against Flesh and Blood, it is very interesting to see the other channels like as like sharks, right? Kind of, oh, that guy wasn't good for the game anyway. SS is always right. He's already, we worship this company. Because again, it's in a crypto scenario, like if it's a rug pull, the last thing you wanted to do is a key component of the rug pull, say, hey guys, this is a rug pull. Then that component needs to be shut up immediately, right? Because, oh, we're still in the rug pull phase where we're hyping it. So it, it reminds me, there's a lot of elements of this where I just think of, you know, a rug pull in crypto. And, and the, the truth of this, and this is the truth that even their biggest staunchest supporters will admit, their fluking box guy, Without Rudy, this game would be nowhere. This game would be dead. Without Rudy, who's backing, I think, Sorcery, which is, again, magic, sorcery, oh, ha, ha, very funny, right? That game would be dead. Without Rudy, you know, backing MetaZoo, would MetaZoo be dead? I don't know about MetaZoo, but I do know about Flesh and Blood and Sorcery, right? I mean, this is a one-to-one -one ratio. MetaZoo, you could argue, okay, Pokemon is the better comparison, right? Here, it's definitely Magic the Gathering. There's no question in my mind that, you know, if Rudy doesn't promote this game that had launched, that no one cared about when it la was launched, um, this game doesn't even exist and there's just more Magic players. So, and um, back to the, the Louie guy. So he has an interesting channel. He spent a lot of time making these uh, charts and price graphs and blah for the and then patrons and so on i mean he had a relative seven thousand subscribers for a flesh and blood channel is one of the largest even like fabled hunter which is their version of like open boosters slash rudy has only two thousand subscribers 
That's the other thing I didn't get. If there's so many people playing the game and so on and so forth, and Channel Five all sponsoring like all of these people, like Armanon or something like that, then like why don't they have more subscribe? Like I'm I'm confused. Like, like, you know, like um. For for us, right? If somebody just came new to the scene and they started opening alpha and beta, just like open boosters when he came in the scene, but like a new open boosters a hipper, younger open boosters, then yeah, he would, they would grow massively. I mean, even in the sports industry, the great curator, right? He's like their version of uh, Fabled Hunter. He kind, They kind of look the same, right? They kind of look the same. They're kind of the same age. They kind of, you know, he's talking about Marvel, right? And he's got more subscribers. So like, I'm not sure like what's happening in these games, you know, because they don't have the um, like Pokemon for instance, you got Lean Hard, you got the big hitters, right? They're all over a mil, right? Um, and matching the gathering, you obviously have Tolarian, and you even have uh, what, what Card Kingdom has one, not Card Kingdom, Channel Fireball has one, uh, ED, or I think there's like a million EDH ones that are huge. So it, it's curious to me, like, but this guy is a relatively big in the flesh and blood community, and he started as a flesh and blood channel dissing magic. Now, and he sold his magic reservedly. I remember watching a video of his, and, and you know, I really enjoyed the video because I'm like, oh man, I wish I bought that reservedless collection. <laughs> yeah, it's good for me. There was an exodus. Rudy had convinced these people, magic players, and they were magic players. Saint was a magic player. He had an alpha block low. How could he not be? They convinced uh, Louis from uh, the MetaZoo podcast. Uh, it's really weird that they named their podcast MetaZoo. May the zoo be with you. I forget. Kitchen Table TCG. I mean, um, that was interesting. Uh, you know, that they, if you ask like any flesh, to fund flesh and blood buying, which they all bought from Rudy, including Louis, and Saint doesn't need to buy from Rudy, but maybe they, I don't know. Unhinged Magi, right? Talks about flesh and blood sometimes, and Open Boosters bought flesh and blood. I mean, it seems like they sold off their magic collections. In many cases, like Louis, they sold their entire magic collection, or in Saint, they sold a very expensive card to fund, fund this other card game, which was. So the point I'm trying to say is like, if everyone in this card game believes this card game would not exist without alpha investment, that's a very dangerous place to be. Right, even the people who are the staunchest, like Flukenbox, right? The guy who is coming after Louis and George and so on, right? For this and that, oh, I got, I got emails, I got blah, 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 right? He's very not friendly towards these two, right? Uh, from his last video I saw. Even he is saying that without, without Rudy Chan, that this game cannot. So like if the game existence is based on one person who's not, you know, I, I don't know what the relationship is. You know, does he own part of the business? Who knows? Like, who actually knows, right? Companies in New Zealand, so I assume that getting that information is a little difficult because, again, international laws. Uh, it is a very interesting thing, but the one thing that you have to learn is never sell your magic collection to buy and fund a new game. I've seen people do it with Digimon, I've seen people do it with Flesh and Blood, I've seen people do it with MetaZoo. They sell their magic reserve list or their alpha black lotus and there's no way that this new game is going to outperform the ogs right magic pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. they just cannot because they've been around for a long time like the way i look at it is if i played a mobile game and the mobile game looked like a mobile game from 10 years ago and nobody they, were, they would have no player base because you have to use today's technology, today's art, today's graphics, today's engine, right? To make your mobile game. You're not gonna make a mobile game that looks like a game that was made 10 years ago. Even if it has nostalgic value, it's not. For instance, Pokemon. You know, I always talk about the IP of Pokemon. They come out with new Pokemon. They come out with new games. They come out with new TV shows with Ask Ketchum still. I think he's still around. They really milked that 12 year old for all he's worth, right? And they come up with new other trainers and sidekicks for him and new uh, pluses and new Pokemon centers everywhere. They have 25 years of generating IP that is solely theirs. Pikachu, Charizard, Sprigito, right? Like the evolutions, right? 
the card game, the, the video game, the everything. They are a huge, huge IP. I think they're probably number one in IP, and the Hello Kitty might be number two. Um, that is not MetaZoo. MetaZoo is based, I mean, I remember, okay. This is about flesh and blood, so I'll leave it at that, but you know, if MetaZoo reminds me of the History Channel where every mother effing show is about finding Bigfoot or finding Loch Ness or finding, eventually the viewer is like, wait, these guys are just liars. These people just lie, you know, <laughs> there's no Bigfoot, right? There's no Mothman, right? They're just making up, oh, I found a feather or a firebird, right? Like, you know, uh, you and this is Monday Having History Channel. It's like, what's going on? Like, is the History Channel gonna teach me about history? Or is it gonna teach me about like, you know, these scavengers who are trying to like find these mythical cryptids, right? And, and eventually when you grow up, you're gonna get out of that phase where you believe that these people actually are telling you the truth. Oh my gosh, look at this footprint. No, they left the footprint there, you idiot, <laughs> you know? I was watching Pirates of Adrak or something, and then they have found a gold coin in perfect condition randomly at the end of the last episode of the season. And they're like, oh my gosh, the gold coins are right across this fence, but the government is restricting us. Mother effort, if there's like a 10 million, a hundred million dollars in gold coins there, just go past the fence, man. What, what, what are you talking about? Like, if you're so certain that there's just a pile of gold fo fo coins right across the fence, right? Wait, you tell me that this fence is provide. <laughs> just don't film it, you idiots! Like, just you know, just cut the f cut a thing. If, if this was true, it would be so easy to acquire the gold that these idiots just left there. Because then, if it was true, everyone would go. Oh, the gold's right across that fence. The government said not to cross. Okay, what well, if we cross the fence at night? We don't film us crossing the fence, and we just use our metal detector at night, and then boom, 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 boom. We found all the gold. We're rich. Well, I mean, I don't get it. Like, what, 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 what what's the problem? The, the problem is this fence. <laughs> There's no government guards, no security cameras. There's nothing. It's just like a fence. But they make it seem like, oh, next season we'll get it. <laughs> it's so lame, right? Like, if you're a little kid, you might not know better, but. After you watch your 50th cryptid thing where they're hunting Mothman and they're making stuff up, eventually you're gonna realize, whoa, a second, this cryptologist, right, when they put his name on, cryptologist, crypto expert, isn't actually a real degree. It's even worse than gender studies, in my opinion.